Okay, so I'm looking at the first race of the day at Hexham, uh, two mile four, Berlon handicap. Liquidity is poor, very poor, and we've got probably because we've got a big field and it's first race of the day. So whether I put a trade through or not, um, I don't know. I'm not going to rush to, and if I do, it's got to be. Um, I've got to be careful because these high odds. If I accidentally lay the wrong horse and uh, with no money, Ogly, in the market, that was to come shooting for me. Through me, I could have a big problem, um, which we obviously don't want. So if we are going to get a trade through, it needs to be quick and early. Um, a little bit of money around sixes. That was jumping around a bit. I'm looking at how much money is actually getting. It's changing hands. So if you don't know how this chart works, the number there is the biggest um, column. So the biggest bet there was 90 quid. The biggest bet there was 58. So you can see there's a lot of small ones. There's a few around the 50s, 40s, 30s. That one there would have been the 101, and the rest would have been lower. So it gives you an idea of how quickly the money's coming in and how big the stakes are. You can see that the stakes on this 40 quid, the biggest ones, these must be like just like bots or whatever. So this may be one literally to totally leave alone. I'm going to put the sound on. If I see an opportunity, I'll take it, but I'm certainly not not really bothered about putting any money through on this on this market. I'd rather wait to the next one. Uh, just in front there, a couple of lengths in front of Atomic Angel, the Grey Mare. They're coming up then towards the next flight of hurdles or at least coral blue is and led over it by 10 lengths on we go in second place on the inside wandering west of Hidia. coral blue's a long way ahead i don't like behind <coughs> and the price has come in on it obviously because it's 10 lengths ahead we're not even halfway through the race yet though couple of lengths behind then to the striped jacket of lua house with so he might have shot his bolts a bit too early but between that one large action and the white jacket as they race on down the hill the great georgie follows and then comes the grey and orange colours of Piaf Bubbles, who's got a couple behind her. And they are Atomic Angel on the inside and wider out then to the slow starting your place. Jumping the next flight then and moving on towards the last one on this part of the race course. And it's still... A deer! Who's got this... Come on. The advantage. They take the next flight there. Might have to take a loss, and it's that 300 quid there's obviously going to hold things up. Now move up for left handed up the hill towards their point Come on. of departure. Coral Blue's advantage probably now about 15 lengths, I would say. Come Maybe on. A touch more than that. Strike of Lighting has come through now to go much closer and shares second place with On We Go. So I took that out just to be just careful. Losing its pitch behind them is the £300 there is making me a lot happier than what it was a minute ago. With on the outside, because that will hold things up if it's genuine. Look at Coral Blue go. They've passed their point of departure now and uh, moving down the back straight where maybe Ross Chapman can get a bit just of checking a... Checking the, the race timer. But I can't see I'm this you, man. jumping up too much. Over it very nicely indeed. Now, Strike of Lighting has uh, left uh, and gone clear second now, left the others behind. About four lengths clear of On We Go, Father's Advice, as they head down the hill. Uh, looking for Atomic Angel, who's still got quite a bit of work on. Very cool ride at the moment. One horse is that is picking up these leaders is wandering west on the inside, being squeezed along. So we've got so no house traveling well the cushion. Nose. I'm looking for a cushion. The eye too, as they continue Something that's going to stop. Uh, right behind them then is caught I'm out of here, man. So too is Stop the money come crashing in. And uh, from the back now, PF Bubbles is suddenly on the move, passing a few rivals. Large action has made no impression just yet, but still seems to be travelling all right. So, racing then up the hill again. Watching the timer. The time here. <laughs> Sucker. And that's it, job done. Or is he? We know what happens on this famous hill at Hexham. He's leading by maybe the best part of 20 lengths. On we go is under severe pressure now to maintain still her position. Caught. And she's There's still quite a way left to go, but I'm, I don't want to get involved in this business part of the race. But um, yeah, so you can see there, basically, that was a good example of using cushions. That £300 that was a few ticks below me, I knew if the price had gone through me with the size of the bets coming in, I would have got a good couple of chances to get out against that 300 before the markets went mad or pushed on any further. So that's what I kind of I went in. 391 not bad off a, a crappy little market like that. Let's move on. I will just show you what there is today. 
today uh, racing. So basically, we've got um, Hexham, Warwick, uh, Southall. I won't be looking at Southall much because that's all going to be all weather, shorter races. There might be the odd one or two that are longer, but I doubt it. Uh, and then we've also got Dundalk. I won't be bothering with Dundalk. So today, um, it's Kempton this evening. Might have a look at Kempton if there's any longer races. Market suspended. But what I'm mainly going to be trading today is just simply uh, Warwick and Hexham because again, they're going to be the two tracks that suit my strategy um, in terms of distance and racing. It's really important that you, you know, you make sure you're picking the markets that suit your strategy and not just trying to trade any old thing in the same way because you will lose money if you do that. Got to be selective. Let's move on. I just want to show this quickly. Look how far my video is behind. Post time. 10 seconds, nearly 10 seconds behind. This is going to be extremely dangerous. I cannot rely on any information um, from uh, the race on this one, and I've got to rely purely on what I'm seeing in the markets. 10 seconds is far too far behind. Um, I've got to use it market. like a chart. Market in play. Um, Liquidity-wise, it's low as well, so we've got to be very careful here. This is worse than TV pictures. Um, I've never seen Betfair videos so far behind before. Um, you can only check the racing TV, too, unfortunately, by using that technique. Um, obviously, you can check when horses finish the race, will it help, help uh, when the market shuts off compared to when they cross the line. Um, if the market shuts off and they cross the line, uh, doggly, doggly. Quite, a bit, quite a bit afterwards, then you know on the other stream that that's behind as well. But it can change from race to race. But just be aware of that sort of thing because now if you're trading in play, this is quite dangerous. So I've got to be very, very mindful of that. Man and Merry Mistress yes. is just last of a well grouped field. Heading to the top of the hill, get a weapon. And Kai Lenahan, less than a length ahead of Warranty, with Restitution on the inside of Go Steady, and Come on, James rest. third, fourth, Thank and you. fifth. Made for you and Cinderella and Gregor are the next trio, and Marage Man a and dear. Mary Mistress remain in the last pair. On the descent, it's only halfway through the, the race. Straight. The yes, home straight made for you, Cinderella. <laughs> go steady. Sucker. Next trio get a weapon after losing the advantage is now a spent force as the leaders turn into the straight with two to jump. It's warranty from Grizzly James. Both riders getting to work. Made for you's about three or four lengths off them. Ridden in third. Mary Mistress is beginning to stay on, but she's just lost the rider. Going to the second last. Warranty moved on by a couple of lengths. Over Five two quick. Out. That would do. Grizzly James now. We're in the red zone. Made for you. We're in the danger zone. Don't care who wins now. Um, so uh, yeah, that's gonna look like it's gonna be. I've got a five pound of four ninety nine. Oh, five oh three or four ninety eight. Four ninety eight probably. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Bit of bit of a market <coughs> little bit, suspended. <coughs> little bit dodgy there. Um, with the timing and the video, but I do recommend on these racing TV streams that you compare um, the time um, on the video to the, to the time on your um, on your software. It doesn't even doesn't matter what software it is, but um, that information comes from it's live time, where that information is from the video stream. So we'll have another look at that later on. Right, I'm straight over to Hexham for a free mile novice chase uh, liquidity is low and it's extremely low when you consider that there's an odds on favorite in this uh, race this is one to be very careful of um, i've only really got one horse i can trade and that is the second favorite and what you've got to consider is if anything happens to that favorite um that is to fall that price goes massive out gets pulled up whatever um the price is going to come crashing in and uh, leave me in a really awkward position if i'm laying um the second favour. So always got to be mindful of that. Got to watch that favourite like a hawk, um, especially as it's a, a chase as well. If it was hurdles, it wouldn't be quite so bad. They're less likely to fall on hurdles. But so yeah, be mindful of that if you're doing that. Sometimes it's best to just miss these out altogether. I'll have a little look whether I actually put a trade for or not. I'm not too bothered on this one. Let's have a look. Please. Sean Quinlan has barely moved on Crystal Glory. Not interested in this. They're coming up the hill and they've got... So, no opportunities on that race whatsoever. Um, there was 
some earlier on I wish I'd got involved in um, but I wasn't comfortable enough with it so it's probably wise that I didn't to be fair um, favorite has just ran away with it basically let's move on so I've got two miler here at Warwick it's a, it's a novice hurdle um, there's been a fair bit of money turned over um, the quality is pretty good for this time of year, actually. It's the most I've seen, say, five last couple of days. But there's a problem with this. The reason the quality is high is probably because it's a two-horse race. Market, sus Although we've Market got loads, in play. We've got loads of outsiders in it, but it's, it's a two-horse race. So we've got to be really careful, because if we lay one of these horses, and then the other one falls, um, thankfully it's a hurdle and not a chase, um, we could get into a lot of trouble, because it means the price from the other one it's going to come shooting down. So if it's the other one that falls, not the one we've laid, then um, Oakley, up, Oakley. we're going to we're going to have the price crash against us massively. So it's something to be very very mindful of. Um, sometimes it's best just to miss these races out altogether. Um, I'm going to have a little look. I'm in no rush to get involved. I've got to see something that you know I feel confident in before I put my money on the table for this one. American Land is third, then follows Always Busy and Amron Sage. William of York running on behind those. Rounds out the leading half oh. dozen as they level for home. Yellowstone Park weakened quickly after three out. Ardenay is staying on and so too from the rear is sailed away. Bash's reflection from Gitchy Gummy. And American get his Land every chance. Always Busy with with every chance and Amron Sage coming there strongly too as four of them go clear running towards the final flight oh, always like busy led oh, like the loss. two out jump the final flight two or three lengths clear under Jack Tudor and he's galloping away from them American Land and Amron Sage are second and third Gitchy Gumi failed to quicken but always busy running on strongly goes on to win in the hands of Jack Tudor market Sage, suspended so <laughs> I only put a two pound fifty lay in, and I, I tried to. I, I wanted to stop, cancel it as soon as I pressed it, but it was just too late. Um, um, had to take the pound loss. Obviously, I didn't put any more than that through. Um, the horse lost, but I wasn't prepared to go and lose like what a four is. It could have been a tenner. So you know, I didn't want that to happen. So yeah, I took the pound loss. There you go. I didn't even get to green it off properly, unfortunately. Um, I tried to get it off for a little bit more for like sort of 29p or whatever, but the price didn't come back in. But better to be safe than sorry. What's a pound? Make that back soon enough. Let's move on. I, I did say, by the way, didn't I, that these races are dodgy, so I was actually thinking about totally skipping this one out. Um, I wish I had it done now, but you know, it goes to show you how dodgy they are when you've just got two horses in a race like that in a big field. Two, those two. Uh... Right, just looking at this race here, this isn't worth my bother. We've got a very short odds on favourite. Um, I have put a uh, lane low strategy on uh, Raf Gearin for 50 ticks down at 4.1. The chance of me getting picked up are probably pretty remote, so you probably won't see the end of this video. It's probably get cut off now, but just to show a video that's not worth trading. You notice I've got this uh, TP thing up here. I accidentally <laughs> clicked the wrong button. Um... um Free race. I was trying to click onto, onto my window and I'd expanded it and just hit it by accident. So that's why I, I just scratched it and the scratch meant a penny. That's so I haven't actually traded it. Um, I don't think them ref gear is going to do anything. In fact, I'm just going to move on now. But you know, there's no point trying to trade races that are no good for your strategy. So I'm just going to move straight on to the next race and we'll see how that goes. So just to show you um, the clock, as I had a problem, we've been a long way behind. If you compare the two timers now, see the difference. That's what I expect. That's what I normally get. And you can see, obviously, the video is a little bit behind, but it's uh, it, what a second at most, less than a second. So that's, you know, now I know my video is, is more up to date. It's still a little bit behind, but not much worth worrying about from my point of view. Um, People aren't going to get too much of advantage from me in this situation compared to how they could have done in that last one when it was miles behind. So, um, yeah, a little tip for you when you're uh, trading uh, uh, through these um, racing um, case streams. So, anyway, what we'll do, we'll come back to um, this race in a second when it starts and uh, see if we can make some dosh. And look. 
Okay, so this is the two mile five furlong novice hurdle, uh, quarter to two on a Wednesday afternoon at Warwick in November, 16th of November, 22. Um, we've got a short price favourite in this race. This was um, even money. Oggly doggly. Did shoot out a little bit towards the start. Uh, it's come back into where it started at. Um, basically, we've got to just try and look. I don't really want to be trading short prices like that. Um, I'm hoping it ain't going to just run away with the race. It's in front at the moment. If it does, it isn't going to give me much opportunity to trade else because everything else is going to be too high prices. But we'll have a little look and see what we can do. Um, see if we can make some cash on this one. Might be worth going in here at sixes because there's a bit of a cushion down there. And obviously, if I'm going to go in, I want the crossover point. But um, we've got to also watch how much money is changing hands and how much the markets are bouncing around. So I've cancelled that off there because of the basically 100 quid that came in over those two price bands there, where I'd, which would be my exit. So anyway, let's have a look and see what we can do. Wings the hurdle, landed two or three lengths clear Shame. of Mexico and Spring Meadow. They prepare to yes. run towards the top of the hill. Ginny's Destiny is on the inside. As the favourites coming in. Disputing fourth, Ernest Gray and get up pushing the other Fonu. prices out unfortunately get up mush and carry crewer who's responded to pressure to get back into contention and hunsbury is about to relegate hit the kettle to be the back marker, but neither are traveling particularly well top of the hill look away by a length and a half mexico in second on his the more and more look and way spring meadow just stays in front on the descent the doesn't pastry. give us Ginny's much to trade i'm not going to trade at these big river. prices round out the leading half if something goes Bethany wrong i'll blame you inside seventh. bank in front of get up mush and carry crew yeah. on the outside of Come mexico on, get down who's there, been ridden along our second and third more, Ginny's more, destiny more, more. is in touch in fourth as they leave the back straight behind them and that quartet have gone clear of ernest gray in fifth and kai tuna river lovely jubbly get up mush as well <laughs> there. Behind those and the remainder are tailing off look away with the advantage as they approach the turn into the straight from mexico but Ginny's destiny moving in into contention under Stan Shepard on the outside Spring Meadow fourth off the turn look at that look at that look away he's probably screwed it we're in the red zone we don't get involved now I've reset the ladders Ginny's Destiny and Mexico Ginny's and Destiny. loses the lead going to two out Ginny's Destiny travelling strongly took over Spring Meadow blundered badly when weakening in fourth the SP on that then the final flight Ginny's Destiny's gone clear of Mexico look away well held in third Spring Meadow and Ernest Gray the next two they're halfway up the running. It's Quite Jimmy's right destiny there, coming clear for Stan Shepard. Just goes to show that odds on spin get turned over, and they often do. Um, that was by market suspended. SP will be where the biggest pile of money was. So up here somewhere. So that's probably what the SP was around there. I think. Yeah. So it just goes to show, but it's a shame that there was not so many opportunities there because um, the odds on favourite was leading the race all the way through, so the price was pushing in, pushing in, pushing in, and pushing in, and um, pushing everything else out. But we did get that 15 ticks, which was quite nice. Um, so, yeah, that'll do. We'll move on to the next race. So we've got a two-mile um, novice hurdle. Liquidity is not too bad, it's so over 300k. At Hexham, but the reason it's higher is because we've got short price favourite. So doggly, doggly. A lot of money been turned over on that horse, and you can see like 232k of that money has been on, on the favourite. Um, we've got to see how this goes. I think that's the favourite in front, which means the price is going to keep dropping if it is. I'll double check that in a second. I think it is. I think that's Milan. Milan. Yeah, I think so. Which means if it is, it ain't going to be much chance on anything else um but we'll have a little look um because if it leads i know there's a long way to go but because it's a favor everything else is going to push out even if it gets caught right at the end and uh, people are going to get back in that favorite so unfortunately we might not be able to make too much from this but we'll have a go anyway and see what we can the race course the uh, next two flights coming up to 
mill down now and he jumped that one well the first I mean obviously he could fall or anything pretender and leading force over together in second and third oh. and they've opened up a bit of a gap then to bingo is back in fourth yeah, place she tried to take that out. watching him take that there mill down that was would you believe it the second last just like in the last race a there's a lot long way to go as yet so i'm not so worried about final this flight so down the back straight he goes mill down the leader by 15 ring pretender in second three or four away then to leading force who in turn i'm out of here man clear, then, of moving into fourth now copper beach in the blue and pink colors of sue smith top cloud is next then just a length behind that one followed by bingo i heard you paint the houses uh, and then three lengths to arc one more gin who's being squeezed along and uh, this is bob has dropped into last place now down towards the dip about to pass their point of departure can they catch mill dam i'm out of here man look there from gavin sheer i've been a bit greedy here so i hope they can't catch him ring pretender and sam colter is the one that's trying to chase down this leader the gap now may be down <laughs> sucker but they climb the hill could be that Gavin will have kept something up his sleeve here. Maybe that's eight lengths now, the leader. Mill down from Ring Pretender. Bingo has moved up into third place now from leading. Problem is, greed can really and then comes screw you over. So you've got to be careful sometimes, you know. The work on the gray mill down. There you go, 10 quid. Lovely, jubbly. Job done. So we just see that in the other race, we saw like a short price favourite go head on and then come Market third. suspended. Repeat performance. Um, I managed to get a lot of ticks there um, on a big price. So I think I've got, I don't know how many ticks it was actually. It was quite a few. Um, let's have a look. But you know, I sort of nearly did regret it for a bit because I could have got out for six quid quite early on. So I went from fives all the way to 16. So that's a hell of a lot of ticks look. So what? That's uh, that'll be ten. That'll be twenty. That'll be twenty. Yeah, what did I say? Eight. Twenty. Thirty. 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 Forty. About forty-five ticks. So that's why the profit is so big. Um, off that little stake, off one little trade. But yeah, it's got something's worth doing if you see the opportunity. I was quite confident it wasn't going to catch it, to be fair. Um, and the price, even if it did, I thought the price would bounce out. But um, I was ready at all times to take a, a small loss or to take a smaller profit if need be. Um, and I'm ne I very nearly did take six quid there, but there you go. Let's move on anyway. So we have a two mile four furlong um, novice handicap chase at Warwick, uh, 215. On a Wednesday afternoon, it's only a free runner race. Pre race, most of the horses were sort of trading around similar prices, not a lot of difference in them. Um, I don't really like small fields like this, but we'll see how we get on. Um, just look for an opportunity, and uh, if we can take it safely, we will do. Um, I need to keep Ogly, an eye on, need to keep an eye on what the runners are doing. I've checked my time compared to the video beforehand, and it's uh, it's pretty. It's about a second less than a second in it behind so i know that's pretty accurate at the moment so anyway let's have a look see what we can do and see if we can nick a few swing complete on the inside of lily the pink who's back in front outright jumping the seventh fence walking clover keeping tabs on the front two just a couple of lengths off them come on as they race up to pass the enclosures with a full circuit ahead of them that don't and shoot best scene i'm gonna have to lower the price handicap chase so Lily the Pink on the outside of Swinkham Fleet, Rex Dingle from Aidan Coleman, with two and a half lengths in hand on the Harry Skelton ridden walking clover. Come on. As they approach fence number eight. I'm taking it out. Lily the Pink. Up a bit now. And Swinkham Fleet back up sides. There you go. A <laughs> stable companion. Disputing second, coming to the fourth last. Swinkham Fleet from the rallying Lily the Pink. Almost back up sides as they run to the last in the back straight. And I Three think that would do me. Lily the Pink out jumps. Market suspended. Lily the Pink only gave best on the flat. And yeah, interesting race there. Anyway, £3.8. I didn't dare do much more than that. 
could have been other opportunities to get some money through, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to put my money at risk if I'm not confident in it. So anyway, let's move on. So we've got a very young race here. Um, this is a four mile handicap chase. Um, liquidity isn't that great. Um, I'm hoping we're still sort of at the start. Horses are settling down, but I'm hoping this is going to be jumpy. Sometimes, um, sometimes these markets, when they're longer races, can be really settled down. But if they keep jumping around, doggly, doggly. It might might give us opportunity to get a lot of trade through. It just depends how the market moves. But they look all right at the moment, but they might just settle down in a second once they get into their stride and not really do a lot and just sort of. You know what I mean? Um, not me so much. So we'll we'll have a little look and see what we can get through. Jamie Hamilton on the event of Civilla. And there was a slight mistake there by Prince Dundee. And I think D Star had a knock on effect on him there as well. He certainly didn't jump it as fluently as Kevin Brogan would have wanted. As they cross over the next. That was fine. They're moving Oops. then past that uh, fourth fence and heading up there. So far to go, you say that. In this marathon test. And they're being led here by Event of Civilla. First time visor on. Price is bound today. to bounce back up. As they come towards the home straight. Well, the inner home straight at least. And up towards the fifth fence now. Event of Civilla. Beautiful leap. So too from Storm Lorenzo in the green. Yeah, ma'am. Um... Then uh, on the inside there, D Star together with Diego's way and wider out to Prince Dundee. Just Coming towards the water there, jump, number six here. In case it gets a bad water jump. As they cross over it now and uh, move past the enclosures then with the event of Civilla. Um, still so much time. Start. Can the visor... You know, this is an eight-minute race. His passion for racing as they go to this is bound to pop up there at some point. Jumped it nicely. Uh, there is the go on, go on. Storm Lorenzo, and the close touch to Diego's way. And the Prince Dundee, and the who we know at least gets this trip, is close. And you go, five pound forty three. About that. Again, all good over that. Bit of a slower trade, so but you can afford to do that in these longer races. You really can. The last fence on the next. Uh, the next one is the ninth. Bit of money here. This top part of the course. Event of Civilla. Still striding out ahead of D Star. You know, they've still got three miles to run as yet. With right behind them, that money. Diego's way. And Storm Lorenzo. Someone's getting Just a big lay on there. That one, Storm Lorenzo. And gets passed for fourth place there by Prince Dundee. And you can see Nathan Moscrop is cajoling him along to try and get him to get back and to concentrate on his job. Moving up the hill towards the point of departure over on the far side here. And this BK Racing. Long distance handicap chase, event of Civilla by two lengths then to D Star. Diego's way, Prince Dundee. As they cross over fence number 10. And it looks as though Lorenzo is really struggling going down that hill. Gets a little reminder down the shoulder. Let's see how they jump the next. And well, it, it's a bit of a labor performance from Storm Lorenzo, but this is early days. I mean, it's a such a long distance race. Exactly. They've uh, only just jumped to uh, the 11th fence then of the 25th as they head down the yeah, hill. A bit of a coward there. Towards the next. And then there's a little bit of a gap before they get to the open ditch. So, event of Civilla. Still leading. They love these Jumping races. Well. Just out to the left a touch there. Printing star, it really, unless you cock up Diego's badly. Second. If this comes in even more, in fourth and still, still, still with two miles to run. In there in fifth in the green jacket. Getting a bit of a breather. A one, no doubt, as they race down the hill. Event of Civilla. Leading from Diego's way. In the hands there of Sam Ewing. Let's get in there. Third, then, is Prince Dundee, Stephen Mulqueen, and then D Star, Kevin Brogan. Champion conditional, of course, Kevin. And Storm Lorenzo ridden into that there by Nathan Moscrop. Just racing a touch lazily at the back of the field. That's probably why he's got the cheek pieces on then. So they're moving God. up the hill again towards the next fence. And they all jumped it pretty well, though Nathan's the one that's working the hardest of the five jockeys. So they're coming up the hill for the second time here. And when they turn in, they'll face uh, the 15th Should have got in there just now. In this class four handicap chase, and you have to say, Event of Civilla is in a really nice rhythm in front. Long way to go yet, but 
He comes up to it the lead of about three lengths. Ivanta Sibola skips over it from Diego's way. And D star oh, hang on. on D. And jumping gone. out to the right there was Storm Lorenzo. Here's the, op the water jump coming up to them again. And only about four lengths would cover them. Let's see how they go on this occasion. They uh, did it well. I'm out of here, man. Inside there, D star getting a bit of a hurry up now from Kevin Brogan. He's still in third place in the maroon cap. D star third in this race 12 months ago as they cross over the next now. And Storm Lorenzo doesn't really appear to be enjoying himself much. Still being cajoled along. Here's the next open ditch then. Number 18 here. And the event of Civil up from D star Diego's way. Like I'm going to up to five. And Storm Lorenzo. Too many clicks. Nathan Moscrop having giving himself a decent workout. How long we got to go? And shoving away on this one. But he was third in the Durham National over three miles five last time this horse. So he does stay pretty well. And they go now to the last fence on this part of the course. And Storm Lorenzo. Oh, he made a mistake. He's unseated. unseated. I'm out of here, man. You ever hear that? Unseated, whatever. Cancel your bets off straight away because you don't know what it's going to do to the prices. Sure he made a mistake. And Nathan, who'd been pushing away for the last couple of miles, probably, has uh, been unseated. He's walked away, though, which is fine. The horse seems fine, too. So there's four left. Event of Civila leads them up the hill towards the 20th fence here. And he jumped in about two lengths clear of D. <laughs> Sucker. Is Diego's way. Prince Dundee is in fourth. Just jumped that out to the right a touch. Gave him a little bit of ground at that fence. Over the next they go. Oh, shit. Prince Dundee just needs to just pick it up a little bit if he wants to try and close down these three leaders. Event of Civila, Diego's way, and D Star. Three lengths to the good over Prince Dundee as they now hit the downhill part of the course. Still so far, the guy. 22nd fence. Event of Civila has yet to see another rival. And he's been jumping really well. A little look across there from Jamie Hamilton. You'll know that Diego's way and Sam Ewing are chasing him. D Star is close up behind in third. You wouldn't rule out Prince Dundee because he does stay so, so, f so far, this horse. He's about five lengths behind the leading three. But the climb won't mean anything to him. He'll stay on, I'm sure. They're coming down the hill. Then the event of Civila. Diego's way has got him in his sights in second as they approach the open ditch, which is three out here. Oh D Star God. in third place. Cool. Prince Dundee, over that fence right. they go, and now they begin to hit the climb now as they approach the second last here in the BK long distance handicap chase here. An event of civil has opened up again and has found a bit more for Jamie. D Star is now going past Diego's way. It's question time for Diego's now. Will he get this four mile trip? The recent Bangor winner, Prince Dundee, I'm afraid, is not picked up at all. They're racing up the hill then, and Event of Civila, who's been in a super. And that would do. Lovely job, please. 24 26. Really all the bit of scalping on long races. If you see these long races, it's four uh, mile handicaps. There was a bit where, obviously, I lost more profit. I was in the red a little bit there, but I was fully confident that was going to come back at some point. Look how long it's gone on for. It's gone on even longer than average so it, the normal race would last eight minutes 56 seconds the race time has run out they're still running because they're knackered you know and there's so much time as long as you don't be stupid and stay in too late um you can see the sort of money you can make but 24 26 is lovely for just 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 a little bit market suspended S scalping using two pound fifty a click and bear in mind I only started with a um a 50 pound bankroll today so and making 24 26 in one race is incredible if you think about it like that um i'll be over the 100 pound mark when that hits my account i'm going to take 25 quid out as i always do i'll move that to my poker wallet to keep that money safe but then if i was to do something stupid i could only blow 25 quid for the day if i've quid on the 25 quid on top of that again i'll move that out as well um anything above 75 i'll move out again um and then uh it just means if I was to do something absolutely stupid and make a stupid mistake, my money's safe. I can't lose nothing. I can only lose uh, profit. Anyway, just move on. This is the uh, next weight race at Warwick.
it's a uh, two mile um, novice chase liquidity looks like it will probably be okay um, but it's a very short price favorite in it it's only a free horse race um, the only real horse I'll be able to trade is the second favorite and the problem with this if something happens to the favorite that price is going to come crashing I'm going to get into a lot of trouble I do not fancy this race whatsoever so I'm just going to simply skip it out there's a profit from the last race just added in I'm going to take that 25 quid off and then I'm just going to skip this and move on to the next race it does not suit my strategy so that's what you need to do when you're trading you need to make sure you just trade the races that suit your strategy cut the rest out cut cut the races out that you're more likely to make a loss on and just concentrate on the ones where you're more likely to make a profit sometimes less is more in trading so just sort of show that I've got a one mile seventh Erlon at Handicap Chase at Hexham, um, seven minutes to three. Uh, liquidity is low, as expected, at least it's above 200k. This is a shorter race, um, it's just shy of two miles, so unlike the four mile race where I could go into the red zone a bit, I've got to be a lot more doggly, doggly. In this. If I don't, I could get caught out. Um, so, yeah, we'll just see, look for some opportunities and see if we can get a few trades through as, as opportunities arise. They just uh, took, may have taken a false step on landing there, and never didn't have much of a chance, to be honest. So uh, Bandit Dane is out of the race, moving up towards the last fence, number six on the far mm. side. Graystown, the leader. Oh, and great. It's a long way to go, but as it's a short race, I don't want to mess around for too long. Flanks there of the Blue Jacket. As they move away, Trish, get that out, Trish, Trish may just be in front now, just checking to see there. There, there's Emma. She's fine. She's walking away, which is great news. Oh. Trish is up to Graystown. The two of these ahead of kicks after six. Right um, behind them in the green and yellow. Again, long way to go. Halfway through the race. Your arrow. Then the right, arrow I noticed that coming out. Coolmoyne racing a bit wider, close up behind them in sixth place. Bit of a gap opening up to the others now. Struggling a touch is absolutely oh. Dylan. So too did my grey just cock me over? They go down the far side and head towards the eighth fence now. Trash just in the centre on the inside okay. is Graystown. Wider out then to kicks after six and Sean Quinlan who's keeping. I'm out of here, man. Of course, just as Coolmoyne is right behind them, Fourth of July, and on the inside, follow your arrow and Jonathan Bewley in the red cap. And then uh, no, I feel stupid. I've made a cock up here, haven't I? They move down towards the downhill. How fence. much time we got left? I've got a little bit of time. Coolmore is beginning to struggle a bit as well. It's the leading five now, really, isn't it? Treshnish, the leader, then from Graystown on the. I'm out of here, man. Peace runners, kicks after six has been travelling well behind them. He's in third alongside Folly or Arrow, and Fourth of July and Will Shannon. We managed to scratch it, thank God. Place. They're moving on down there. <laughs> Sucker. Then to the. Labouring absolutely, Dylan, who's trying to stay on. Coolmoyne has not run much of a race, sadly, today. He's struggling behind him as they move so on. We've got to be strict, and I'm being a bit naughty, yeah. The faller there, we lost one. And I think it was Gracetown that went there. It was. Gracetown is down at that uh, third last fence at the open ditch. Over the last fence on the far side, Treshnish, the leader from kicks after six. And then Folly or Arrow. As they move on up the hill now, 4th of July is in 4th place. This climb up towards the final fence now, beginning to take a oh, step on the... Am I even going to get a pound out of this? No, give me a Thomas pound. From the, on the outside there, Folly oh, well. and Jonathan Bewley. These two seem to have it between them as they make their way towards the last fence here in this Class 5 contest. I'm running slow, the ground's slow, you can see. record here at Hexham, hanging on very, very grimly. So, yeah, got out of trouble there, basically. Um, only made 62p in the end. Um, I did what was right. I did flash up to £10, but I knew there was a long way to go. And you can see that the ground is slow because this race should have been over after three and a half minutes, and it's taken them quite a bit longer. It's taken them, what, an extra 30 seconds on that race. Than Market the suspended. So, I had a little bit of time. But, you know, 62p is better than a loss, isn't it? Let's move on. So we've got a three-mile uh, race at Warwick. Uh, it's a handicap chase, quarter past three um, in November, so not many races left to go today now. Uh, we've got a sort of short price favourite and everything else is sort of bigger prices, but I'm sort of hoping as some sort of struggle a bit, some of these sort of mid-price horses will come into more tradable ranges. If not, I'll have to just sort of focus on that. 
6.0 or maybe on the favour. But we'll have a little look, see where the opportunities arise and go from there. And Snow Leopard S is coming back seemingly unscathed. On the approach to the back straight on the first circuit, it's Calypso Collange from Coba Lobo in purple and pink on the So outside. at the moment, the markets aren't really moving enough for me to get involved. As they close you know, in. like if I was to go in here, 6-4, for example, with 4-6, I'm going to be up here. Wandering you can see it's not moving up there. Banded. So I don't want to get involved in that just yet. With Potter's corner on his inside as they jump the second. This slowness so sometimes happens with um, so longer races. With Kobalobo and Ramses de Taille on either side, jumping the ditch in the back straight. Followed it's kind of why I was so lucky with that four mile one that was moving around so much. Sipage, then Celebre Dallin, as they jump the middle fence in the back straight, Gwen Silly Burbus remains in rear. Coming to jump the fifth, Calypso down there, really. headed by Ramses de Taille, oh. shows in front once again on the inside. Is that going to shoot in even further? Crikey, that's got to be a market overreaction, surely. First time Miles around. to go. Wandering Star tracks the leading trio. Then People will realise. And the rest. The patiently ridden Salem and the rest. Berlin, and Gwen Silly Burbus remains last. Well, that Coming money's inside, there, I'm safe. Two miles. Well, on the approach to fences seven and eight up the home straight, Calypso Collange on the outside. So when they're so far, okay, that's a big with amount for the horse to come in. Them. Then wandering star Potter's corner. Sipage, just can't see how it can stay uh, down there. It's, a, it's just a market overreaction when you see that. And Gwen Silly Burbus continue in the last pair. Yeah, all the way to three five. On their way to fence number eight, Calypso Collange. Ramsey Taille back Thank in you. front on the inside. Couple of lengths in front of Coba Lobo and Potter's Corner third and fourth. Wandering Star is fifth. I just can't possibly stay down there to go. with this much to go, you know. Sipage is seventh and then Celeb Dalen and still in rear but well in touch. Gwen Silly Burbus. They're running on to Come on. another turn that leads them on to the next line of fences. Nine through to eleven. Ramses de Taille on the inside of Calypso Colonge, three lengths now for Coba Lobo, Potter's Corner. So we're only halfway through the race as well, so this comes even, been in even more. By Charlie Deutsch after jumping the ninth, drop back into the so tempted, last that must have come into favouritism, yeah. Ramsey's de Taille is pressing Crikey. on, jump that more than a length in front of Calypso I know he's in front, but... Come over the last in this line, number 11, Coba Lobo. You know, he's still got a mile and a half to run. Third, Potter's Corner is two lengths off him, a length to Durasha counter, who's still travelling with purpose. Look at that. Celeb Delen is beginning to overtake rivals, so too oh, is Gwen Silly Burbus. Wandering Star has lost his place, and Sipage is now bringing up the rear. At the top of the hill, on the final circuit, Ramses de Taille makes the descent, just over a length in front. Calypso Collange in second, Coba Lobo going wider, is four lengths off the lead in third. Potter's Corner oh, and the improving yeah. Darasha counter. I'm out of here, man. Now into the leading half dozen is Celeb Delen. Then follows Gwen Silly Burbus and Sipage has relegated the labouring wandering star to be the new back marker. On the approach to the back straight then, seven more fences to cross. Ramses de Taille leads them into the back straight. Calypso Collage on, only a length down in second. Coba Lobo, Go. Potter's and Corner with Durasha improving between rivals, going strongly. Delaine is behind those. Then Gwen Silly Burbas, and they've dropped Wandering Star. Seven out, Ramsey's the turn, his nearest pursuer. I'm out of here, man. Collange as they run to the front. counter is about to take third from Coba Lobo, Celeb Delaine, Potter's Corner struggling to go with them. Wandering Star's been pulled up as they come over five out. The middle fence in the back straight. Ramsey's de Taille jumped it too clear from Calypso. <laughs> Come on. The Sucker. Coba Lobo, Celeb Delaine and that group of five are clear as they jump the fourth last. Ramsey's de Taille jumped it two lengths clear of Calypso de Collange. Then follows Darasha Counter. Celeb Delaine's moved into four. Let's get that last two quid out. Come on. The third from home. He's stopping.
dropping to nothing now. Potter's corner and Gwen Silly Purvis have gone past him. Off the home turn, they've got two to jump. Ramsey's de Taille bidding to run the finish out of his rivals. Calypso and Collange will swing in second. Like the full 20th I can there. And Celeb Delen both off the bridle in third and fourth. And they're a long way clear of Potter's corner. At the second last, Ramsey's de Taille nearly three oh, lengths clear. Calypso Collange in second. Derasha counter a length off. So you can see really the reason um, I got all that money on that on that race is just purely because it was so long. Such a long race that um, there's just plenty of time. And once the market start bouncing around like that, you're pretty much putting it. Eleven pound ninety six for a little bit of scalping with a seventy five pound bankroll. You know what I mean? What can you? You can't argue with that, can you? Um, anyway, let's move on. Market I only, suspended. I think there's only two more races left that suit me today. Uh, there are various others, but like I say, a lot of this doesn't isn't going to suit me. It might be a couple of longer ones at Kempton Park, and just because of the high liquidity. Might be one or two I can do there, but I'm going to knock it on the head for the day soon. So I will probably, I haven't looked at the races yet, look at Hexham in a second, uh, in one minute's time, and I will probably just look at Warwick, I would have thought, unless there's anything longer. Let's get across there quickly. 49 seconds, I'll restart that in a second. Okay, so we've got a two mile handicap hurdle. Um, it's the... Uh, I think it's the last race at Hexham for the day. Might be one more. I think, I think this is the last one. Unfortunately, we've got an odds-on favourite in the race, so it's not ideal for me. Don't like it. Doggly, doggly. Control too much of the market. But there are sort of uh, a couple of other horses that might be worth a look at uh, to trade as well. So we'll have a little look, see if we can make some money safely. If not, we'll just sort of sit back, really. Let's have a look. Fractions here as they turn in towards the home straight. Bon Vitesse and Emma Smith Chaston just uh, tracking on the outside. Just racing. The problem is, like they always say, if something happens to that favourite, Battle of Toro, come day, go day. Um, we're going to get in trouble. If the favourite leads the race, as they warm up, coming up then everything else is going to go out and be too big to trade, even if it doesn't win. So it's, it can be a bit of a come day, go day, bit of a bitch, really. To give her a good view of that flight of hurdles. So they're not going a breakneck pace here. Pretty steady, being held together in front. Paddy the Horse, Jonathan Bewley from Battle of Toro and Charlotte Jones on the Just going to sit down there and see if we get a little dip in price. Obviously, Bobby there isn't Tess. much of a cushion beneath me, so i got my finger over that XK to cancel that off. A double, of course. Very quickly, and sure, I need to. Having won the four four uh, miler from the front earlier on, if you don't do that, I recommend you, if, and you're trading like this in play, day, have so your finger hovering on that X key all the time. Just hit it quick. As long as you're clicked on the ladder and you're hovering over the ladder, that'll cancel the bet off. In this lucky last race, big league saves me a lot of money horse. in what would have been losses by using that button. Now the ward and leads from Battle of Toro, the consistent grey on the and inside. Two. Over the next they go. Paul and Neil a little bit slower than Jamie Hamilton might have liked there, but he's recovered quickly, and they move on to the dear. where they turn left. Head up the hill with Paddy the Horse. I'm going to green Horse. it off in case to it. Green off properly. Them. Battle of Toro on the rail on the outside. That's Bon Vitesse. Paul and Neil. Every penny counts. He's beaten a, a whisker on the flat last time at uh, Catterick. Although the first time he's been tackling hurdles for almost two years today. And See, I'm losing in yellow colours. Not much, but I'm losing pennies. Each time Sydney this goes out, each time the favourite's doing Down better. The far side they go. The first flight taken. So just clear that in. So there you go, one pound sixty-five. Not much in that, but I don't really expect much money for them type of races. Market suspended. Just to pick up the one sixty-five, you know, you, you get. Two or three of those a day over the course of a week, it adds up for a little bit of money, do you know what I mean? So, anyway, let's move on. So, this is the last race of the day. It's a two mile bumper at Warwick. Last race I'll be trading anyway. Um, as you can see, there's a big field, high prices. Whether I put a trade through or not, I don't really know yet, but we'll have a little look and see if there's an opportunity. A close second, a couple of lengths to Aaron Nell. Black Horse Lady sticking to the inside is next. Uh, they're being followed by Fortune Forever, improving towards the leaders. In a there's a long way to go, so I expect that price to bump back out. But what I am worried about is the lack of money. Seven furlongs. 
Shiraco's magic that is quite jam scary. with a narrow lead from Hillary I'm kind of regretting Couple going into this trade now. Then walk of no shame, fortune Got forever. a fair bit of time, Whisper so. On the wind's made headway out wide. Molly Brown is being shaken up on the inside to improve. Spice I'm out of here, man. With the red cap going well, is making headway. Smurfette's improving from the rear. They're about five furlongs Come on, from just... home. And it's Hillary Deleku now just taking get me up from matched up. Magic Gem oh, that's Aaron annoying. Hill in third. Fortune Forever, Whisper on the Wind, circling the field. Then follows Walk of No Shame. Harry Skelton's bringing Smurfette markedly closer. Spy, Spy I'm Spice out of here, man. Retreat as Polly Wonsock begins to stay on. They're on the approach to the home straight, a quarter of a mile to go. All change up front. Hilary Deleku's given way to Aaron Nell and Fortune <laughs> Forever. With, the with every chance on the outside and Smurfette is being that on the inner. Walk of No Shame is chasing the front four, but they've gone clear and they've got just over a furlong to go. Fortune Forever, Aaron Nell, Smurfette, Whisper on the wind, a close fourth. Walk of No Shame, about three lengths behind this leading quarter. See if I can get a few the pennies, maybe the not. Furlong, walk of no shame on the outside. So, yeah, you see, that was thick and fast. Uh, managed to get 10 ticks on, on now. Uh, Smurfette, I didn't feel comfortable about that. Market trade. suspended just because it's a bumper, really. And I don't really like bumpers it's because the market was so thin. There was a few big back bets coming in, like that went all the way into 1.67. I don't think that deserved that. I wish I'd laid that down there somewhere. Um, you know, for like 100 ticks or something, it wouldn't have cost much, you could have made quite a bit of cash. But anyway, that's me for the done for the day. I hope you've uh, managed to pull some tips out of what I've been showing you. Um, I'll show you the results in a minute once this adds up to my account and uh, show you what we've done. But 100% success rate today, which is pretty cool. Oh no, sorry, there was the £1 loss, so nearly a 100%. 90% strike rate or whatever, 95%. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Bugger off iTunes. Right, we'll show you the results in a second. Okay, so have a little look at the day. Um, just to show you, there are more races that could be traded. Um, there's uh, more races at Dundalk, but that one's just gone. It's four minutes past uh, four now. Um, but there's there's others. There might be a longer one at South Southwell. Oops, I'll just click on there. Didn't mean that one. Sorry about that. So if I look at self, well, that's an hour's time. Six furlongs, that would obviously be no good. Um, <clears throat> Six oh eight in a couple of minutes. <sighs> Might be out of trade. That is a bit short, but I'm I'm not really interested in them because they're not ideal. When I've got all these longer races and stuff, I don't want to be looking at this sort of stuff. There might be a longer one at Hampton. I don't know what's the eight o'clock. Seven third on no good, but there might be a two miler or something I could look at later. But I just I can't be bothered. To be fair, I'm going to stick with what I've done. That's me done for the day. So if I show you the results, uh, just close that market down. So that you can get that out of the way. We'll talk about the day. You can see we get too much personal detail, right? But there you go. So you can see what we've done. We had um, did have that loss today. I've actually only traded eleven markets. If you remember that um, that one p one, I actually that was just a scratch. I pressed the button by accident pre race, looking at it, and I didn't actually trade that race. It didn't see my strategy. But out of all the races available today, um, I've only traded eleven, made sixty nine pounds sixty, which is more than what I made yesterday. Yesterday was sixty four, and yesterday I think I traded eighteen races. So sometimes less is more. Being more selective about what races you um, you trade uh, can make a big difference. Obviously, I had that um, really nice one um, where I basically just put in money on that 24 26 um, because the race was so long and it was jumping around so much. It was ideal, but basically. Um, a couple of the bigger ones were, were better as well, but you can see if you can just select out the races that suit you better. If I'd not traded that race, also I didn't trade that one, the three pound, that the sixty one, the one um sixty eight there. If I'd missed all them out, I'd have had a nice little profit still of around what, around fifty five quid or something for doing hardly any work, for doing like literally half an hour's work in a day. So much better than going to work. Obviously 
um, over the time span. If you look, we see, we're, we're talking about sort of uh, 11, it's probably about an hour's work, but it's spread over sort of three hours, really, isn't it? Um, I've been doing other things in the meantime, like housework and stuff like that. But I hope this has helped you uh, today. If you've got any comments or whatever, give us a shout. If you want to be um, successful, basically what I do is I have almost four sets of rules. I have a set of rules on my strategy. Never change them in play. Um, you know, when you're actually trading, if you want to treat, if you want to sort of tweak your rules, then do that at a later, later time, you know, sit down and think about it. So my first set of rules is my strategy. My second set of rules is my race selection. As you can see, I've only selected races that suit my strategy. And then my third set of rules is based on timing. When do I place the trades? And um, when do I close a trade off, if, especially if it's losing? Um, or when do I hang on to it? And that's all to do with, I use obviously the race timer um, for that. If you need a copy of that, give us a shout. Just drop me an email. There's a small fee towards um, programming course, but it ain't a lot if you need a copy. Um, so and then the, the final thing I do is record keeping. Um, now, obviously, you realise that I screen record all my trades, um, hence why you can watch these. Um, but I do watch them all back myself. I look at my mistakes, especially places where I've lost money or places where I've done particularly well or anything. You know, I might watch anything a little bit dodgy for whatever reason. I might watch over several times. And the reason I do that is because I've learned a lot from myself. I learn, and you will as well if you do it. So I highly recommend you do that. Um, for record keeping, so I can analyze my figures, I use MG Spreadsheet, which is a link to in the description. Highly recommend it, but you know, that is a tenner. He charges for that. But um, if you don't want to buy that, um, you can always set a, a basic one up yourself. You know, it's, it's better to keep some basic records than none at all. Um, just basically so you can cut out the places where you're losing money and focus on the places where you're making money really important to do that that's why I have days like this is because you know I, I, I know what I can trade I know where I can trade I know where I make money I know where I lose money I know if I trade Dundalk I'll lose money so that's why I haven't touched the Dundalk market so I always you know on average I do long-term basis so just bear, bear those things in mind um, any queries questions drop me an email leave a comment please don't forget to hit like and subscribe other than that best of luck in the market so wish you well bye bye for now Introducing Geek's Toy Trading Software, the fastest, most customizable and most popular software for betting and trading on Betfair and BetDAC. Designed by professional traders for you. Key features include unlimited desktop settings and the ability to create custom profiles to suit every user's needs. unbeatable speed, real-time prices, and one-click betting. Unique management of multiple markets. You can bet or trade on multiple sporting events simultaneously. Support for eight languages. Context-driven help on every window. Searching and bookmaking, training mode, advanced charting, enhanced navigation, support for Betfair coupons, stop loss and more. Geek's Toy, possibly the best Betfair and BetDAC trading software in the world.